Howdy folks, I hope you're all well. Um, nice to be back. I've finally proven negative for Covid, but those of you that have had it will know it, your body, you know, it takes time to recover afterward. You're going through that recovery period, so apologies in advance if you hear the odd little cough and splutter uh, while I'm doing this short video. And so all the usual stuff out of the way first. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. It's interactions like that that help this channel stay well up in the YouTube rankings. But also, if not more importantly, it's customers, not just visitors, to our website, ringing us up or coming to our optics weekends that help this channel continue and I can keep coming up with uh, new products. Talking of which, here is one. Well, not a new product, but... Turn it around. It is, as you can probably tell, the Skywatcher Star Travel 102 AZ. And this is a dual use uh, telescope because, as you can see, it comes with a 45 degree erect image diagonal, so you can use it for terrestrial use, which I'll come on to shortly, and also wide field astronomy because, you know, 102 millimeters into 500 millimeter focal length, it's you know, just under uh, uh, an F5. So it is quite a fast telescope, uh, so it can be used for DSLR photography, even better so if you put it on a driven mount. But I'll probably do that on, a, on another video rather than cram everything in at one time. So you, you get a 20 times and 50 times or uh, eyepieces to get you started. And they are the modified achromatic 10 and 25 millimeters, which do get mixed reviews. Just turn it round and yeah, but the eyepieces can be upgraded uh, and I, I will come on to that uh, also very shortly so wide field astronomy so it's perfect for finding your way around the night sky if you find it difficult to find things because you've got that wide field of view especially with 25 millimeters so you know if you do like star hopping going from one uh, star to another uh, to a to a you know to find open clusters, rich field star clusters, like the double cluster in Perseus, uh, where do I begin, uh, the coat hanger, things like that, you know, it's perfect for wide field astronomy and from a, from a dark sky area, that 102mm f5 will really see very faint objects. Uh, only goes up to 50 times, obviously, obviously you can increase that with extra eyepieces or a Barlow lens if you want to look at the planets in more detail. But for things like Jupiter and Saturn, to be honest, you don't really need that high magnification. You, you, you'd know what I mean when you look through this. You know, I, I can see the cloud belts on Jupiter through my 25 times 100 uh, binoculars. The eyepieces that you get with this, I noticed it is a short tube refractor, and so you, compared to, let's say, the Eva star the Evo Star models, which are like a meter long focal length or 900 millimeters. Uh, I'll, I'll just get onto that mount in a minute, like uh, just just show you something. Yeah, it, it is a shorter focal length, and so you do get more chromatic aberration than you would do with the long tube refractors. And I found a nice little trick to reduce that, probably by accident. What I did was, I'll show you in a second what I did. Uh, I got the, the lens cap and, I, and inside the lens cap the, for the objective there is a, a little cap you can pull off and you can reduce the aperture. I'll just show you how I do that. Lens cap on, pull that off. And so now you have a re reduced aperture, you know, what, what's that, 50-60 uh, uh, millimetres? And I found that with, the, in the, with that the chromatic aberration reduced and so if you're looking at the moon where you don't need full aperture that could be quite a handy tip and I improved it even greater uh, or reduced the chromatic aberration even more by uh, putting in a better eyepiece. I put in a Skywatcher Nirvana 25mm, uh, sorry 16mm ultra wide angle eyepiece with the lens cap like it is there with the reduced aperture and in the centre of the field the chromatic aberration was pretty much gone. And so a combination of doing that 
and upgrading the eyepieces. You don't have to do that for the start. For start, these eyepieces are great for getting you started. You don't need to upgrade straight away. These will be perfectly okay for beginners. But if you're wanting to reduce that chromatic aberration, then you will need to upgrade the eyepieces. So yeah, back onto the tripod. You will notice uh, it's the clue is in the title. You can just see a bit of my Dobsonian there, just on the centre, just off centre. Anyway, but that's another topic. It is a slow motion control tripod. The clue is in the title. With these controllers here, up and down, left and right, it moves slowly. Uh, if you want it to move more freely and you don't want to use those, you can slacken off here and under here. And I've, sh I've shown that in a, um, an another uh, video, how to do that. But obviously slacken them off too much, you do reduce that stability. As you can see, it has a 45 degree, uh, sorry, a, a red dot finder as standard, but you can put a visual one in if you like. Uh, such as the Skywatcher 6x30 or the 9x50. So just a quick rundown. I'll just to put everything together you have the diagonal that goes in like that. Screw it in and then you put the eyepiece in like that. Yeah, apologies if you already know that, but some people watching this for the first time won't know how to put an eyepiece in, and um, I'm happy to help with that. So, yeah, it's a fantastic little scope, this a true dual use one, ideal for wide field astronomy. Uh, if you want to look at objects more higher up at the zenith, maybe look at a 90 degree diagonal, but they're readily available to purchase from us, hopefully. And uh, yeah, and uh, for terrestrial use, Absolutely ideal for sticking at the bottom of the garden if you've got a nice view or put in the back of your car. You can actually, with adapters, put it on a photographic tripod. So yeah, that's a, a quick look at the, the Skywatcher Star, Star Travel 102. It, very similar in specifications to the, the best-selling, or our best-selling scope, the, Sky, the 80mm. This one just gives you that little bit extra uh, light grasp for finding uh, objects uh, that are fainter in the night sky. So I'll I'll go on to some other things with the scope in another video. But we'll we'll just uh, this was just a quick uh, look at um, a quick overview of the scope for now. So um, thank you very much for watching as always, and I'll, uh, I will see you soon.